all right dear students we have a question relating to depreciation and let me read the question for you fortnam production is preparing the asset section of the statement of financial position on 30th september 2021 so we are being provided some non current assets detail and the year if the year is ending on 30th september 21 then the year must have been started on october 2020 Now, as you can see, beta, we have three assets. One is premises, one is motor vehicle, and one is fixture and fittings. We are being provided with the cost of non-current asset and the accumulated depreciation as well. So, another name for accumulated depreciation is provision for depreciation. Now, we have non-current asset movement since the year ended. So, this means we have bought some of the new assets and we have sold some of the existing assets. So first of all, its premises, then motor vehicle, then fiction fitting, then the depreciation policy is given. Uh, the first requirement that we do have is calculate the depreciation for each category of non-current asset for the year ended 30th September 21. So we are being provided, we are required to calculate the depreciation for each of the categories. First of all, beta, the first asset that we do have is premises. now let us see what is the depreciation method to be charged on the uh, premises a uh, fourth name production has the following policy for depreciation all non current asset are depreciated at the rate straight line straight line method also known as equal installment method and in this method we are uh, used to charge depreciation equally each year so the depreciation rate is 2% uh, on based on cost charge depreciation all all non current asset owned at the end of the year so this means it is not a month wise policy instead it's a full year policy so sir how much premises do we have at the start of the year we have premises of 1 lakh at start of the year if there were no changes in the premises uh, so therefore we can uh, just apply 2% on the cost that is 1 lakh but here as you can see some information relating to non current assets are also given uh, we have extended the premises uh, by 30000 so if you remember beta there were two types of expenditure one was revenue expenditure and one was capital expenditure so revenue expenditure is one that is done to maintain the non current asset or to run the business and capital expenditure one that increases the value of a non current asset such as if we are buying a non current asset or maybe we are upgrading or modifying a non current asset so in this case we are extending the premises maybe we have increased one more floor okay from single story to double story so this is uh, although was completed on july but we are supposed to charge depreciation on the entire value because it's not the month wise depreciation it's a full year policy okay all non current asset depreciated uh, depreciation on all non current asset owned at the end of the year so what we need to do beta first of all we have 1 lakh and then 30000 what we need to do we need to add both of these 1 lakh plus 30000 would become 130 and we need to apply 2% on this value so here uh, this is how we charge depreciation on assets and sometimes the examiner also mentions that out of this premises that 50% is maybe uh, the land and 50% is building so we would only charge depreciation on the building part beta and not the uh, land cost part then beta motor vehicles are there and let us see what are the methods of charging depreciation motor vehicle Uh, for as far as motor vehicles are concerned we need to charge depreciation at the rate of 20% again this is on, uh, also the straight line uh, in straight line method we better we apply the percentage directly on the cost and if it was reducing balance method then what we need to do we need to deduct the accumulated uh, depreciation from the cost and then we can find the book value book value also known as carrying value and then we can apply the percentage as far as motor vehicles are concerned at the start of the year we had motor vehicles of 50000 and if there was no uh, new transaction in this year what we need to do we need to apply 20% on the original cost that is 50000 but this year as you can see a motor vehicle which had cost 10000 with a accumulated depreciation of 4500 was sold so this means we have sold one of the asset 
and new motor vehicle was purchased so beta what we need to do we need to add the asset that we have bought this year and we need to detect the asset that we have sold this year in order to find the closing value so previously we had motor vehicles worth 50000 sterling then we bought a new motor vehicle worth 15000 so 50 plus 15 65 and we need to detect this 10001 this was the old vehicle so the asset that we have sold no longer need to be depreciated under full year policy so the new value of the or the closing value of the motor vehicle is 50 plus 15 this would be better 65 minus 10 55 okay so we need to apply percentage 55000 times 20 percent it would be 11,000 okay. 11,000 is the depreciation on motor vehicle now if you have any confusion kindly do let me know so that we can answer your queries then we have better fixture and fittings fixtures cost 9,000 at the start of the year so have we bought any new fixtures or sold any existing fixtures ready as far as fixtures are concerned we have 9000 at the start of the year fixture was sold for 500 at their carrying value so cost was with a 1000 so in straight line we are not concerned with the carrying value or net book value also known as net book value we are only concerned with cost of fixtures so what happened but at the start of the year we had fixtures of 9000 and we sold one of the fixtures worth 1000 that has originally cost the business 1000 so 9 minus 1 would be 8000 and we need to apply 10% on the 8000 8000 10% would be 800 so this is how beta we charge depreciation using straight line method now which other uh, requirement do we have beta we need to uh, prepare extract from the SOFP so what is this extract beta this is not the entire SOFP we just need to show the non-current asset section we need to see that how these non-current asset would be presented under statement of financial position so if you remember from your earlier studies whenever we prepare an SFP it is made in three columns and first of all we need to write non-current assets then the three columns are cost accumulated depreciation and net book value so let us see better which assets do we have first of all we have premises now at the start of the year beta we had premises of 1 lakh and this year we have extended the premises by $30,000 so the total value that is closing value would be 130 so how to find better the total provision let's start with the opening provision that are we, we are being provided by the examiner at the start of the year we have accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation of 26 so have we uh, sold any premises no we haven't sold any so then what we need to do uh, in the opening provision that is 26 what we need to do better we need to add the depreciation of the uh, current year okay so previously better we had depreciation of how much previously we had depreciation of 2600 sorry 26000 and this year we charge 2600 so what we need to do we need to add both of these values 26000 plus 2600 now the total is become 28600 so if we deduct the provision from the cost we are left with net book value also known as carrying value let's see how to approach motor vehicles so uh, we have a motor vehicles 50000 at the start of the year and have we bought or sold any vehicles yes we have bought better one vehicle that was worth 15000 so 50 plus 15 would be 65 and we have sold old motor vehicle that has originally cost the business how much 10 so 65 minus 10 would be 55 is the closing value so what about the provision for depreciation sir previously we had provision of how much 30,000 okay previously we had 30,000 and this year we charge further depreciation of motor vehicles of 11,000 so 30 plus 11 would be 41 but have we sold any vehicles as well yes as we can see here better the motor vehicles are there and we have sold one of the motor vehicle and now we need to see that what was the accumulated depreciation of the vehicle that we have disposed this year now it's already written as 4500 and if the examiner doesn't gives us 
the provision that the examiner can tell us the original date on which that we have bought the old vehicle so what we need to do we need to find out the total depreciation till date but here it is already given as 4500 so beta if we have sold one of the asset we need to deduct the cost of the asset uh, from the cost value as well and we need to deduct the total provision from the accumulated depreciation account as well now the total provision that we do have beta is 36500 so if we deduct the cost and accumulated depreciation now the difference between the two would be what would be net book value difference between the two would be net book value then after premises and motor vehicles third asset that we do bought is fixture and fittings now how much fixtures we had at the start of the year or the end of the previous year we had 9000 and have we bought uh, any fixtures we haven't bought any but we have sold one of the fixtures that was cost the business originally how much 1000 so what we need to do we need to deduct 1000 from the original cost 9 minus 1 would be 8000 now what about the total provision better at the start of the year we had total provision of how much 2000 and how much depreciation we have charged this year this was 800 so 2000 plus 800 but uh, have we sold any uh, fixtures yes we have sold a vehicle on uh, 1st June and we have sold it for 500 at their carrying value so we have sold the fixtures on uh, at their carrying value now the question arises sir what would be the depreciation of the fixtures that we have sold this year so beta if we have sold it at their carrying value first of all <clears throat> were sold for 500 okay so if we have sold for 500 this means the carrying value was also 500 so beta the carrying value also known as net book value if we have bought something for 1000 but now this is only worth 500 so this means out of the 1000 only 500 value is now left over so this means the other half 500 was already depreciated okay so how to find carrying value beta the formula for carrying value is cost minus accumulated depreciation would be carrying value if the cost is 1000 and the carrying value and selling price is the same 500 okay this means if we have bought maybe an ipad for 1000 pounds and maybe after two years this is now only worth 500 so this means we can also say that half of the value has been depreciated okay so 500 is the total depreciation so beta if we have sold an asset we also need to remove it from the cost and also from the provision for depreciation now the remaining provision is only 2300 now what we need to do we need to deduct the provision from the cost in order to find what net book value in order to find net book value now we just need to total all of these values the total for cost is now 193 total for provision is this and if we deduct cost and provision we can get net book value and we can also add this third column in order to find this net book value and the total for net book value is how much 125,600. So in the question the examiner is only asked for part A and B but we are extending this question bit further and we are adding some other requirements in this as well and i want you to understand how to make t accounts or ledger accounts for cost and accumulated depreciation as well so first of all let's go through the t account for cost and the first asset that we got is premises now what i am doing beta i am going to make the t account for the cost of premises now as we are aware beta that the non-current asset is debit in nature all the assets are debit in nature so therefore the balance BD opening balance must always come on the debit side now as you can see the question so the current year is ending on September 21 so the year must have been started on after September comes October and October 2020 was the start of the year so we need to put the date first October 2020 sir how much premises we do bought in the start of the year that is end of the previous year we had 1 lakh 
सो द कॉस्ट ऑफ द प्रेमिस ऑलवेज कम्स बैलेंस बी डी ऑन द डेबिट साइड ना हैव यू बॉट एनी न्यू प्रेमिस दिस ईयर येस वी आर एक्सटेंडेड अर प्रेमिस सो एक्सटेंशन इज जस्ट लाइक बाइंग अ न्यू एसेट एंड एक्सटेंशन इज द इंक्रीज इन द वैल्यू ऑफ एसेट सो ऑन फर्स्ट जुलाई वी हैव एक्सटेंडेड द एसेट बाय हाउ मच वी हैव एक्सटेंडेड द एसेट बाय थर्टी थाउजेंड so the entry that we are going to make is premises would be debited and the bank would be credited and if the examiner doesn't says that we have paid through check we can write cash if the examiner says so or if the examiner says that the extension work was being carried out by abc construction company okay so we would assume that we haven't paid abc construction company the amount so therefore instead of writing bank we can write abc construction company that is a supplier so previously beta we had non current assets of 30 and now we have further extended the premises by 30 now the total would be 130 okay now 130 beta is the bigger side and this should come on both of the sides okay and the shorter side would be balance cd balance cd would be balance carried down and carried down is known as closing balance now the year was being ended on september 21 okay now as you can see both of these sides are now balanced and this balance carried down beta would now becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period after september would be october but this time october 21 would be there and not 2020 and this is beta how we make the t account for non current asset cost Okay, let's make T account for other assets as well, if the examiner requires just for the practice. And the second asset that we do bought is motor vehicle. Okay, so what are we doing now? We are making a cost account for motor vehicles. Now, if the examiner only says we need to make motor vehicle account, this means examiner is requiring us to make cost account. Now, again on first September. Sorry, first October 2020. That is start of the year. How much vehicles do we already have at the start of the year? That is end of previous year. Let us see. We have motor vehicles worth fifty thousand. That is cost us fifty thousand at the end of previous year, start of this year. Now this year, let's see. Have we bought or sold any motor vehicles? Uh, a motor vehicle that cost ten thousand with accumulated depreciation of forty five hundred was sold. So whenever examiner sold, say the word sold. This means it is disposal of non current asset on first October. So beta, just remember whenever we sell any non current asset, we need to credit that asset and we need to transfer it to a special account known as disposal. Okay. and the value that goes on the disposal is not the amount that we have received on disposal instead we are going to write the original cost okay so the asset that we have just disposed this year beta originally costed business how much 10000 so we need to write 10000 in the disposal and not the say say na we need to write 10000 and not the amount that we have received on disposal and have we bought any new motor vehicles or not but we have bought a new motor vehicle was purchased for 15000 on what date 15th april so we have bought a new asset worth 15000 on 15th april that is 21 and if the examiner doesn't says that we have paid for the vehicle or not we would always assume that we have paid through check and if the examiner says we have bought from honda motors then in that case we need to write the reference of honda motors okay so we would assume that we have bought the uh, vehicle on credit now it's time to balance this t account as we can see better the biggest side is always the debit side in the cost account okay 50 plus 15 would be 65 and if we deduct 10000 from this 65 the shorter side would be now 55 okay 55 is the closing value as we can see we have already taken this value in the closing sfp 55 and this is known as balance cd so the closing balance is known as balance cd 
and the date would be end of the year that is 31st September or 30th September whatever it is 21 so this balance CD would becomes balance BD at the start of next period on 1st October it would be balance BD again okay this is 55 so I hope you know how to make the T account of cost and we, you can make the similar T account for more fixtures as well so the opening value of fixtures would be this 9000 this would be balance BD and have we bought or sold any fixture we have just sold we haven't bought any so in the disposal we are going to write 1000 okay 1000 would be the cost and we haven't bought any so 9 minus 1 so balance uh, CD would be 8000 this is the same and this balance uh, would be balance BD at the start of next accounting period okay this is how we make T account for uh, cost now let us make T account for provision for depreciation let us see if the examiner wants us to make the provision account let's make the provision account for these two only that we have made right now so first of all I am going to make the provision account for what I said that is premises okay provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation now just remember with a provision for depreciation I'm also going to write premises because there would be separate pro separate provision account for both of the assets uh, one for premises one for motor vehicle and one for fixtures now the uh, provision beta is credit in nature why because it is a contra asset it reduces the value of our asset therefore the opening provision must come on the credit side now let's see beta how much provision do we got for fixtures in the previous year that is 26,000 so balance BD would be 26,000 at the start of the year and start of the year date was 1st October 2020 now beta whenever we charge depreciation this year what is the entry of charging depreciation depreciation expense whenever we are going to record would be income statement would be debited and provision account would be credited just remember beta whenever provision is being increased it is always credit okay provision credit and income statement would be debited now have we already calculated depreciation yes in part a and what is the depreciation of this year beta it is 2600 we haven't sold any asset so now it's time to balance this T account 26,000 plus 2600 would be how much 28,600 okay so the shorter side balance beta would always be known as balance CD okay shorter side balance is known as balance CD CD stand for carry down or closing balance now we are supposed to write dates as well else we would lose marks in the exam so this balance CD beta what becomes balance BD at start of next accounting period so the date would be now 1st October 21 okay this would be balance BD and this is how we make provision account but in this premises provision account there was one thing that was missing and that was disposal uh, now let's see whenever there is a disposal as well let's see how to make provision account for that now let's make a provision account for motor vehicles the examiner will tell you the requirement that which accounts they require from you so let's make provision account for motor vehicle provision for depreciation beta also known as accumulated depreciation and this is the account for what motor vehicles because we said there will be separate account for all of this now provision is always a credit nature beta so balance BD would always come on the credit side now let us see how much provision do we already have for motor vehicle it is 30,000 okay so the date would be 1st October 2020 and opening balance is how much 30,000 now whenever we charge depreciation this year beta the entry would, that we are supposed to make is income statement would be debit and provision account would be credit each year now let's see beta we have already charged depreciation part a so this year motor vehicle depreciation is how much 11,000 
यू जस्ट नीड टू राइट एलेवन थाउजेंड एंड इनकम स्टेटमेंट डेबिट प्रोविजन कर ना एज यू कैन सी बट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सोल्ड वन ऑफ द वहीकल सो वेन एवर वी सेल द वहीकल द वहीकल अकाउंट इज बींग क्रेडिटेड एंड वी नीड टू ट्रांसफर इट टू वेयर ऑन डिस्पोजल सो इफ वी हैव बिट एस सोल्ड द एसेट सो वी डो नॉट रिक्वायर द कॉस्ट ऑफ दैट एसेट सिमिलरली इफ यू हैव सोल्ड वन ऑफ द एसेट सो द टोटल डिप्रीशिएशन ऑफ दैट एसेट वुड नो लॉन्गर बी रिक्वायर्ड एज वेल नाउ वट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू ट्रांसफर दैट टोटल प्रोविजन ऑल्सो वेर इन द डिस्पोजल अकाउंट नाउ प्रोविजन इज क्रेडिट इन नेचर बट वट वी डू वेन एवर वी नीड टू ट्रांसफर द प्रोविजन Uh, we need to debit the provision account and now we need to transfer it to where disposal account now what would go there in the provision for depreciation let's see which asset we have sold here it is written bit a motor vehicle which cost 10000 with an accumulated depreciation of how much 4500 was sold so we are already being provided with a total provision so the total provision till date bit of the asset that we have sold off would be transferred to where disposal account and what is the date of the disposal in disposal we need to write the exact date on which we have sold the asset and that date is 1st october 2020 okay we need to write the date as well october 2020 now let's balance this t account okay and the bigger side beta would be credit side here why because provision is a contra asset in nature 30 plus 11 would be 41 and we need to deduct this value from uh 41 in order to find provision for depreciation closing value so 41000 minus 4500 would be 36500 now the value remaining would always be balance series just remember it's a contra asset and opening balance always comes on the credit side so the closing balance must come on the opposite side that is debit side let's write the date and this balance cd beta would becomes balance bd again at the start of next accounting period and this is how we make provision for depreciation account so similar account if the examiner require you can make for the third asset that is fixture and fitting now the third thing that is being uh, that can be asked in this question is uh, disposal okay now there are three things relating to disposal that the examiner can ask and what these three things would be better first of all the examiner can ask that what is the gain or loss okay calculate the gain or loss that we are getting while selling this non current asset for example we are talking about motor vehicle now the first thing we can be required to calculate is gain or loss on or profit and loss on disposal of motor vehicle i am talking about motor vehicle okay let's see beta how to find gain or loss so you know, how to find gain or loss on motor vehicle let's see how to do that so there is a simple format beta of calculating gain and loss first of all we need the cost of the asset okay the original price that we paid while buying this asset then we need to deduct the total depreciation till date known as accumulated depreciation and the difference between the two would be carrying value also known as net book value okay nbv and then what we need to do we need to deduct the disposal proceeds okay disposal proceeds is how much amount we got on disposal of that asset or the difference would be gain or loss now let's see gain or loss so beta we are talking about this asset motor vehicle the motor vehicle we, that we have just sold had cost the business how much 10000 and what was the total depreciation 4500 so 10000 beta was the cost and the total provision was how much 4500 so if we deduct total provision from the cost we are left with what we are left with net book value and net book value carrying value is how much 5500 and how much we have received on the disposal beta we have sold the asset for 5500 now as you can see the value was 5500 and we have sold it for 5500 only so this means beta we there isn't any gain or loss why because the examiner clearly says uh, that we have sold it for 5500 only 
this means if we sell it on its carrying value this means neither it's a gain nor it a loss let us see uh, what about this uh, asset uh, this also we have sold it for carrying value in that case also we don't have gain or loss so sometimes examiner gives you with a, a different value from this now let us assume for the sake of calculation that we have sold this asset for 5000 only okay so the carrying value is 5500 and we are able to sell it for less than carrying value okay so this cost the business or the value in our books was 5500 but we have only sold it for uh, 5000 so this means the difference between the two bit of 500 would be what what would be a loss and if instead we have sold it for more than 5500 for example we have sold it for 6000 then in that case bit of 500 would be gain now the first of this requirement that the examiner asks we need to find the gain or loss secondly the examiner can ask us to make general entries relating to disposal what general entries relating to disposal now let's see how to make general entries relating to disposal if we are being asked by the examiner so how to make general entries better there's a column for particulars or details or account then it's debit and credit this is made in which book of prime entry these entries are made in general journal okay a book that contains non-routine transaction just remember my dear students whenever an asset is being sold we need to make four entries relating to disposal now the first entry we need to make is the for the original cost okay first entry that we need to make is the for the original cost second entry is for accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation third entry that we need to make is the bank okay the amount that we have received on disposal and uh, if the examiner says we have sold it on credit so then we can make the entry with the name of the customer okay first is the original cost second is accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation third is the amount received on disposal and finally with a fourth entry would be for gain or loss so these are the four entries that we need to make while calculating gain or loss or while recording gain or loss would be better so we can write the dates so the date that we are going to write would be the actual date on which we have sold the asset okay actual date that we have sold the asset on so let's see read the question and what was the date uh, the motor vehicle that we have sold was on 1st October 2020. So I may write the date 1st October 2020. Okay, this is the column for date. Now the first entry that we are supposed to make for the original cost, but as you remember that motor vehicle uh, is an asset and asset is debit in nature. Now what we need to do, beta, if we have sold the vehicle, what we need to do? We need to credit the motor vehicle account okay so the motor vehicle that was debit in nature what we need to do we need to credit the motor vehicle account and this would be the original cost and what is the original cost of the asset that we have disposed of better it is 10,000 we need to credit the vehicle by 10,000 why are we crediting it because it is an asset and asset is debit by nature so if we have sold the asset so the asset account would be credited and what would be debited better just remember in all of these four entries in all these four entries the opposite side would always be disposal okay so if the asset is being credited then the disposal must be debited now this is, this is the first entry second entry beta if we have sold the asset now the total depreciation of that asset also known as provision for depreciation or accumulated depreciation we do not require that provision now okay so what we need to do beta we need to transfer this provision to disposal account as well now what is the total depreciation of the asset that we have disposed of is 4500 now as you remember beta provision is credit by nature now what we need to do we need to debit the provision account and we need to credit disposal again okay 
so in all of these four entries beta one side is always disposal third entry whenever we sell the asset we need to debit the bank or if instead the examiner says we have sold through cash then we can debit the cash so and if the examiner says we have sold on credit so then we can write the name of the customer xyz or whatsoever so bank or customer is being debited so what is the amount that we have received for example i am assuming that i have sold the asset for 5000 so because if i take the value 5500 just as given in the question then there wouldn't be any gain and loss or, and i also want you to uh, learn how to make the entry for gain or loss as well so bank and customer beta is being debited if bank and customer is being debited then the disposal account would be created again okay in all of these four entries one side is common and that is disposal okay and lastly beta there is a loss and the nature for loss is what debit so if the loss is being debited then what i need to do beta i need to debit the income statement okay also known as a uh, statement of profit and loss okay so statement of profit and loss or income statement being debited and i can also write loss in the bracket to be on the safe side so if income statement beta is being debited then the disposal account must be what credited disposal account must be credited by 500 and this income statement would it be written on 1st october why because the income statement is always made at the end of the year so therefore uh, for income statement i may write the date of end of the year so this is beta how we make entries for disposal so sir what if uh, there is not a loss and there is a gain so for gain if the gain is concerned better the gain is credit in nature so in that case if there was a gain on disposal and wo when it would be gain better whenever we sell the asset for more than its book value that is maybe six thousand or more so any amount uh, above 5500 would uh, fetch as gain so if there is a gain then income statement of profit and loss account would be created and if the income statement beta is created then the disposal account would be debited okay disposal would come on the opposite side and where does the disposal come you do not need to remember that okay so let me revise these entries for you first of all if asset is debit in nature whenever we sell the asset the asset would be created and if the asset is being created then the disposal would be debited then provision is accumulated depreciation it is it has a credit nature why because it is a uh, contra asset if the provision is being debited uh, to eliminate that provision account and the disposal must be created if the bank and customer is being debited uh, then the disposal would be credited and uh, if there is a loss then income statement would be debited and the disposal would come on the opposite side and if instead there was a gain then income statement would be credited then the disposal account would be debited so sometimes examiner asks you to make these entries and sometimes examiner can also ask you to prepare a disposal account now what is the difference between the entries and the account account is made in the ledger account format disposal account so it's better to make entries first than to make the account but in the exam you must uh, don't have much time so we can learn to make a, a account directly as well so for now i am using these entries so beta as you remember the first entry is only for uh, uh, for the original cost now if the motor vehicle was sold so the motor vehicle must be credited if the vehicle is being credited then the disposal account must be debited so in the first entry i need to debit the disposal account and the reference would be what beta motor vehicle and this is the cost of the motor vehicle that i have just disposed of and what would be the date date would be beta 1st october 2020 because this was the precise date when i sold this non-current asset now the second entry as you can see in the first entry we debited the disposal account and what was the credit entry motor vehicle in the second entry as you can see the disposal is being created by 4500 and if the disposal is being created then the reference would be provision for depreciation beta also known as accumulated depreciation okay provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation. now the third entry disposal is being created again so in that case 
I would write the bank because we have sold the asset on check and if we have sold the asset on credit instead of writing bank I can write the name of the customer and finally beta the last entry is relating to the loss and the disposal is being credit again by 500 beta if the disposal is being credit then the if the disposal is being credit then income statement must be debited so we need to write income statement or statement of profit and loss and it's better to write gain or loss as well in the bracket just like i've written it okay so the dates at both of the sites would be 1st october 2020 this is the exact date on which we have sold the asset but the income statement wouldn't be written on 31st december instead uh, for income statement i am going to write the end of the year date that is 30th september now it's time to balance the disposal account just remember better disposal account is a temporary account and we do not need to write uh, in the disposal account it's a temporary account and we do not need to write a balance cd or balance bd here why because this disposal account would balance automatically okay it would balance automatically and uh, lastly there is one more requirement that can be uh, tested here and that is we can be required to make income statement extract okay profit and loss account extract so previously in this question if you remember we made the SOFP statement of financial position extract but if the examiner asks us to make income statement extract let us see how to prepare this income statement extract now why I am writing extract because it is not the complete income statement instead it is only that part of income statement that contain entries relating to what non-current asset okay uh, first of all uh, if there is an income statement extract in whichever topic we need to start from gross profit so although the gross profit is not given in such type of questions so then we can write the gross profit as x after gross profit we need to write add other income and in other income there can only be one thing here and that is gain on disposal okay in this topic there can only be one other income and that is gain on disposal so whenever we sell the asset beta add more than its book value then it's a gain and uh, according to our example there isn't any gain but if there was any we can add the gain here and then we can need to deduct the expenses and as far as expenses are concerned there can be two things here one is loss on disposal as you can see we have already calculated the loss here because we have sold the asset for less than its book value then the loss was how much beta 500 so do we have any other expenses yes we need to uh, write depreciation here okay depreciation now as you can see beta in part a we already learned how to calculate depreciation so we calculated depreciation premises 2600 motor vehicle 11,000 and fixtures 800 we need to write all of these here okay depreciation for premises then motor vehicle and then fixtures Just let me move it a bit. Okay, I'm just saving some space and we started off with gross profit. Okay, gross profit was not there. And we just added other income. This was not also there. Then depreciation, there are three types of asset premises, then motor vehicles, and then fixtures. You just need to write the depreciation of all of these, and this is how we calculate uh, income statement extract uh, the values are 2600 11,800 2600 11,800 so we can just add all of these values and deduct it from this okay although we are not being provided with gross profit we can just leave it here only 11,800 so the total expenses are 14,900.
and this is beta how we uh, calculate uh, income statement extract this is how we prepare income statement extract 